So about a month ago, I commented on one of my videos asking for a tutorial suggestion. And one of the replies was from Rockstar Wolf. He suggested that I should make a tutorial on how to make your thumbnails look like a long-eared fox. And he is pretty much talking about his old style thumbnails with a glow to it, which is on the edge, sort of an edge glow to the thumbnail. And it's got the character in. And I said, yes, I can definitely do that, except from it's not going to be 100% exactly the same. The one that I'm going to show you how to do is similar to this one which looks a little bit like this, where you have the border and you have the text, which looks like that. If I close this down and go into Photoshop, I can go ahead and show you what I've done. This is my version of what he's done, but that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and actually make it. So I'm just going to close this down. What you want to do is you want to get a screenshot of a character from the game that you play. And you also want to have a background image. This is just for the background material, this is going to be faded out. You're not going to see it too much, but it does make the thumbnail look less plain. So if we close this down and go ahead and get started, you want to create your project. So file new, and then in here, we are going to set the default YouTube thumbnail, which is 1280 by 720. You can go with 1080p if you want to, but personally, I don't see much point in it since if you put it at 720p your quality will still be just as high as 1080. We're going to start off with a back background just for now because when you are editing you want to have at least one solid behind so just create that and now we are going to drag in the first image so this one right here. If you hold shift and drag the corners out, it will maintain the aspect ratio. And pretty much we don't really want too much of this. We definitely don't want the character. So you want to go to the razor tool, click on the screen and this will turn into a layer. You want to either go up here to change the size or you can press the square bracket on your keyboard and that will make it larger. And you also want to make sure that it is on feathering, so the edges are smooth. Get rid of this. And we are just gonna... So pretty much you just want to turn down the opacity for this. So that it's not 100%. And then we are going to get the image of the character. We're going to drag it in. All you want to do is just move it where you want it. So I'm not going to have mine in the middle. I'm going to have it to the side. I'm also going to turn this one into a layer from a small object by using the razor tool, clicking on the image and then using the razor tool to do this. So now it makes those two blend together. I'm probably going to make this one a little bit larger just so it can get in like, like so. We are going to cut out the character to give him a glow. The problem is I just tried to use the quick selection tool and that does not work very well. If I show you now really quick, it selects the arm, but then the arm doesn't select. So this is the one problem with quick selection tool. If your image does want to work, then go ahead and do it that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool instead because this one will definitely allow me to actually select it. This one will take a little bit longer, but it is a lot better. For those of you that are new to the pen tool, there's two things you need to know. If you normally click one click here, so create the first dot and create another point, it will give you a straight line. If we do Control Alt and Z to undo it. The second thing you need to know is if you create another point and you hold it in, with your left side of the mouse, it will give you a curved line. We can either use a straight line or just a curved one.
Another thing that I forgot to mention is that if you do use the curve line and you want to create another point, it will mess it up. As you can see, it will create a duplication of it. What you got to do to stop this is you hold Alt and click on this dot right here and wait for the icon to pop up. And when it does, you click on it. And now if you have a look, it will make it normal. So that is something that you should remember. Now that we have gone all around it, we are going to go back to the first dot, connect it up. Once it's connected, you will go to selection and you want to put this to zero. You can have feathering if you'd like it to be feathered around the edges. But if you want it sharp, then you put it to zero. As you can see, now it's selected. This is the part where we hold control and press J. This will make it pop out. And if we actually go to the properties of it by right clicking, going to blend in options and go to outer glow. We want to pick a color. So we're going to go with the blue. Once you've picked the color, this is the size. You can change how big you want it to be. You want to turn up the opacity so you can actually see it. Maybe make the size smaller and the effect that you select in here in blend mode is called color dodge. And all you want to do is just keep on messing about with the settings until you're happy with it. So for me right now it is looking okay. I would say maybe size and yeah, press okay if you're happy with it. Now that the character has a glow, we can turn this down and that will make the glow appear even more. Then what we want to do is we want to use the brush tool. So create a new layer by pressing this button down here. Go to the brush tool, which is here. Make this a lot smaller by, by changing the size of it here. And we're gonna go down to look for a brush which we installed i would say let's have a look through these you want to make sure that the color of it is white so you can actually see it once you actually find one that you like so for me this one looks pretty good i'm just gonna make it a lot bigger I'm gonna have one in the corner there let me just undo that Want to find another one that's similar to that one? You then want to go ahead and create a layer above the brushes you just used. And this is for the colors. So we're going to go back to the brush tool and select the one which has feathering outside of it. Make sure the size of it is quite big as well. And then we're going to go with a blue. Now what we want to do is go down to color. As you can see, that's made it into the color. I'm just going to fix up this color because this one's a little bit different. So go with a brighter one. There we go. That looks a lot better. What you want to do now is you want to go ahead and select these two at the same time by holding shift and clicking on the top one. This is the part where I do things a little bit more different. What I normally do is I press control J to copy them and then I hide these ones. And then with the ones that I just duplicated, I then put them together. We're going to turn it back into a layer by going to the razor tool clicking on the screen and then turning it back to normal. We're also going to go ahead and use the selection tool to highlight this and press control J again. 
and then you want to delete the one underneath it. The reason for that is because now it is this area here, there's nothing outside of it. What we are going to do for now is we are going to also get a, another image which is going to sit on top of this one right here to make it harder to see. And for that I'm going to use this image right here. It is like a scrap metal material, it is a texture and you just want to drag this in. Use the eraser tool, click on the screen, press OK and go around this bit here because we don't want it there. And now you just skip through the effects until you find one that you're happy with. I think that one looks quite good. I'm just going to turn down the opacity of it. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually add in some text. This T down here, click on it and you want to hold left click and drag it out. Once you found the correct text, we are now going to make this smaller. Go to this first tool, press Ctrl T, hold Shift and drag the corners out to make it larger. Now that we are happy with the size of it, we are going to actually create some effects. So go to Blending Options. The first effect is to use a gradient overlay and you want to make it so this one is about here. This other one is a lot brighter, so all the way up to here. We're going to change this to 90. Now that we've done that, we are going to get in a inner glow, make this one white and have it the same as mine. We are also going to give it a drop shadow so it makes it stand out. Turn the opacity a little bit higher and put the size on whatever you want. Finally, we'll get to the last one, which is this one right here satin and this one you just want to turn the opacity of and why can I oh right what you want to do is you want to go to the <clears throat> go to the blending option go to multiply and turn this down I think that looks quite good I'm quite happy with that I'm going to press ok copy this so if you hold control and press J again then hold in shift and drag this down so far the thumbnail looks pretty good but we are going to now edit the text by this I mean we are going to click on one of the text and then hold shift then click on the other one now that you've done that you want to right click and you want to convert to a smart object. We're going to go to the razor tool, click on the text, press OK. And the reason why we've done that is because now if we hold in control and get one of the corners, we can do this to the text. And just keep messing about with it until you're happy with it. To actually achieve that border, what we're going to do now is we're going to save it. So go to file, save as, and let's give it a name. Just so the files don't mix up, I'm going to call it 22. Make sure that the file type is a PSD and press save. Now that you've done that, press OK. We're going to save it again, but this time as a PNG file. So back to file, save as, and then PNG. Call it a name what you want and then press save. Now that we've saved it, we're going to open it up as it was right here. So you want to drag it into a different tab right here. And now we can actually create the border by right clicking, going to blending options and then selecting the stroke. You want to make sure it's inside, make it larger, Pray to a black color. So the first thing is to go to hue and saturation. You want to turn down the saturation and then once you've done that you close this down and go to brightness and contrast you want to turn up the brightness a little bit and lower the contrast actually increase it go into blending option on the copy of it of the image and then go to where it says inner glow Now 
make this go to a blue color. Let's go to 75. A little bit bigger. And then where it says screen, go to color dodge. But anyway, that has been my video on how to make a thumbnail have an edge glow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.